granted. The gifts have been wrapped. All across the world, people have been looking forward to Christmas. But for a short while, we're going to do something different. We're going to look back. Look back to the night hundreds of years ago, when there were no decorations, no wrappings, not even the warmth of a home. The night when Jesus Christ was born, the very greatest gift, the very first Christmas. So I invite all of you to come with us and follow the events of that very first Christmas day at Bethlehem. special person who would help them in their difficulties and save them from their enemies. They called that person the Christ, but the Jews did not know how long they would have to wait. Already it was many years since God had promised them this wonderful leader and some had given up hope. But many continued to wait for the gift and they searched the parts of the Bible that they possessed to find out all they could about him. Those who studied hard had worked out that the Christ was going to be born in Bethlehem, a suburb of Jerusalem, while David had been king many years before. I suppose they imagined that this great man would be born in a palace or a temple, so it is no surprise that hardly anybody paid attention to a cave 
behind a hotel in which cows and goats were kept. But we know that once in Bethlehem there stood a lowly cattle shed. was a confusing place to be that night. You see, the Emperor Augustus had conquered so many nations that he had no idea how many people he ruled over. So he decided to take a census and count his subjects. Everyone, no matter where they lived, had to return to where they were born. So Bethlehem was full of strangers trying to get a bed for the night. There were to be no excuses. Even if you were old or ill, you had to go. Augustus would not even make exceptions if you were pregnant, not even if your baby was due to be born any day. Now, that is particularly important for two people in the true story we have to tell. For Mary was expecting her baby very soon indeed. She must have been anxious because she knew already that her son was going to be no ordinary baby. An angel had visited her and told her that the baby she was expecting was the very person the Jews were waiting for. She was to be the mother of the Christ. Fortunately, she was not travelling alone. With her was Joseph, 
who also knew exactly whom her unborn baby was, for an angel had visited him too. He was a faithful friend to her and had promised to marry her. I imagine they travelled slowly so as not to harm the baby. The result was that by the time they arrived, the hotel had no rooms left and the only shelter they could find was the stable we have sung about. And yes, that is where the Christ, the long expected hero of the Jews, was born. And they named him Jesus. That's why he is sometimes called Jesus Christ. Like any other baby born in poverty, he was wrapped in rags and because there was nowhere else, Mary placed the holy infant in the animal's feeding trough, the cattle stall. Not very Christmassy, is it? Not very jolly. The long expected Christ stuck in a smelly stable waiting for the morning. But God plans things in quite a different way from us. And he knew something that no one in Bethlehem knew that night. God himself was the father of that child and his son Jesus was his gift to the world. For that baby grew up into a man who did everything it took for humans to live as forgiving people, restored as God's friends. So let us imagine Mary, Joseph and Jesus in their stable in Bethlehem on a silent night.
Christ had been born, who would you tell? The Prime Minister? The Queen? Well, God chose to tell some shepherds on a hill outside Bethlehem. Perhaps they were the only people awake at the dead of night, as they guarded their sheep against robbers and wild animals. Suddenly, to their amazement, they saw the sky full of angels, telling them that the Christ they had been waiting for was born. The angels told them where to find the baby and how they would know he was the right one. Glory to God in the highest, sang the angels, and peace to all people on earth, for God is pleased with them. The shepherds rushed into the town and searched out the place where Jesus and his family were resting. And all the people were amazed at what the shepherds told them about Jesus Christ being born. Jesus was born, the Christ, 
for whom the Jews waited, born into a Jewish family, visited and talked of by Jewish shepherds. But God had bigger plans for his world than the Jews ever dared to imagine. His plan was not just to bring back the Jewish people to be his friends. His plan was to bring people from the whole world into his family. And while Jesus was crying and feeding and sleeping in his stable in Bethlehem, his birth was having an impact on people hundreds of miles away. In the East, a group of philosophers, scholarly men who studied the great mysteries of the world, became convinced that the time was right for the Christ to be born. They left their homes and set out on a journey to find him. They knew where to go because God made sure that a particular star was in place as a sign. They followed the star to Jerusalem and then to Bethlehem, where overflowing with joy, they realized that God had led them to the very place where Christ was living. This was sometimes later, and Jesus might have been a toddler when they arrived. But let's place them in the stable too, so that we can see them offer gifts to the young Jesus, precious, gold, sweet-smelling frankincense, scents, and a spice called myrrh.
Now it's time for prayers. Lord Jesus, you were born many miles from your home. We pray for those who are homeless this Christmas. Give them your peace, Lord, and show us how to help them. Lord Jesus, you were born shut out of an inn which was full of people. We pray for those who will be lonely this week or sad because they're trying to cope without someone they love. Give them your peace, Lord, and show us how to help them. Lord Jesus, you were born in poverty. We pray for those who have felt obliged to spend too much this Christmas and face a worrying future. Give them your peace, Lord, and show us how to help them. Lord Jesus, you were born in the night and only a handful of people recognized who you were. We pray for the millions of people who've never heard that Jesus Christ was born on earth and never received your gift to the world. Give them your peace, Lord, and show us how to help them. Amen. So now our nativity scene is complete. Try not to forget it. Let it remind you of the great gift God has given to the world, Jesus Christ, the one through whom friendship with God can be enjoyed, forgiveness can be assured, and a true peace can be found. May we wish you a very happy Christmas, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, this week and forevermore. <laughs>